Um, yeah. and I am really happy to present you to Gabriela Ivan um, and her project, uh, her and her team project uh, for Sector Challenge Romania. And uh, looking forward to hear about it more and uh, to discuss with you more about challenges which you are working on. Yeah. So, Wonderful to, to be here with you. Hi. <laughs> yes. So tell us what is your project about and how did you start it, first of all? Right. So this is the main idea to actually ask you about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, our project uh, is about robotics and STEM education. Um, it's called First Tech Challenge. It's a part of a global program founded by FIRST, which comes for, from uh, for inspiration and recognition in science and technology. This is one of the biggest NGOs in the world in terms of education, STEM education, founded in the US uh, 31 years ago. Uh, we brought the program uh, to Romania five years ago. I cannot believe the time passed so quickly. So it was 2016. And uh, the concept of the program is that high school students work in teams and they build robots. But at the same time, they are like a startup because they do branding, communication, fundraising, community events as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when did you actually start um, the challenge? I mean, this uh, project. How was what was the uh, main uh, challenge for this uh, project? I mean, basically, what were your main uh, ideas? What you wanted to overcome, and did it change? Uh... Yeah. Well, I think the biggest challenge that we face then and we even face now is the educational system, which is not uh, built around the idea to work in teams and to have access to project based learning. It's such an individual type of learning journey where you have the student who uh, goes to some classes, does the homework, takes some tests, and there the system, you know, invites the student to invest in himself or herself. But then uh, we realize that in their future career or in, well, their professional lives, they will ultimately have to work in teams. And unfortunately, the educational system in Romania and so many other parts in the world does not teach uh, the future professional to work in a team. Uh, and now we're talking about not only hard skills, if we're talking about science, physics, chemistry, technology, where we're talking about soft skills as critical thinking, creativity, the ability to communicate, to present an idea, to actually have a good relationship with, with people who you can work with. So that's the main challenge that we had. And it was such a new thing to Romania. Wow, a robotics uh, program. And we were thinking, okay, we will start this project maybe with 10 teams from Bucharest high school students but then we did a tour and we realized uh, the high school students were so interested that we ended up in our first year with 54 teams, that meaning 800 students. And it grew from there every year. Uh, now it's about 3,000 students from, from more than 90, 90 cities in Romania. And that shows us that the high school students right now, they want to feel connected they want to be a part of a community they want to work together mm -hmm. uh, and it's not even about robotics like the founder dean Kamen says this and uh, i absolutely love it it's more than robots this is let's say only a tool but the ultimate goal is for the students to develop their soft skills and just work in teams and make friendships be a part of a community mm -hmm. And do you, how do you manage this community? Do you have any uh, tools for that? Uh, like uh, the, I mean, the platforms, right? They help always to facilitate that, but maybe you also have some other ways to uh, keep connections between different people. Yeah. Before the pandemic <laughs> happened, uh, we used to organize a lot of events regional events here in Romania. We had four main cities where we would do demos, 
uh, where the teams would show up with their robots and train. Mm -hmm. uh, then we would have regionals and we would have championship, a national championship. And then we would go to uh, the uh, global championship in, in the US. Because this whole program is designed like a sports competition. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we would have this event uh, in beautiful venues where uh, teams would compete with their robots, but then you would have supporters in the stands cheering up for one another. Each team would have a booth where they would present uh, and do games and all sorts of creative activations. Uh, but after the pandemic happened and we're one year in it, um, we were so surprised, pleasantly surprised to see the online community. Uh, it's a very close knit community. They're very close to each other. And we organize uh, a virtual summer school. And now we have a winter virtual school uh, with workshops uh, that we do. And mm -hmm. the teams themselves organize also virtual events and just one that I saw recently it's in mental health so that tells us we're not only talking about robotics and technology we're talking also about theater art mental health emotional health which is just fabulous mm -hmm. so if I understand correctly you basically foster right uh, formation of a community around one particular topic like robotics and afterwards it creates um, like a, um, further interactions on other topics right yeah 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 because uh, i do believe the the greatest thing right now because we live in a global world world with a shared destiny and we talk about cross partnership so one thing cannot exist without the other we're talking about technology and robotics but that ultimately it's connected to art because you need creative skills. You need to have a broader picture when you create anything or when you solve a challenge. So um, this program is connected to so many other programs. And my job is to develop partnerships like we have here right now and to connect the program with multiple platforms because we're talking about leadership. We're talking mm -hmm. about culture in general, uh, like you did the amazing workshop in January about mm -hmm. smart cities, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. But what, what, what does it, um, does it uh, look like, the challenge, so that, for example, we all understand it, for example, how the challenge which you give to people may look like? The challenge for the robotics team? Yeah. Yeah, that is uh, very interesting. So um, each year, um, the robotics program, the first program, has a competition theme and it changes every year. So last year it was about space exploration and smart cities. Uh, now uh, the theme is related around sports and the mm -hmm. teams are called, are named this year Game Changers. Mm -hmm. So it's the symbolism, think yourself as an athlete with performing on a field trains every day, then goes out into the arena and performs uh, like a sports person and works in a team as well. Mm -hmm. So it's sports related, uh, this, uh, this theme and it changes every, every year. There's a partnership with Star Wars, which is very cool. And they uh, inspire the team every, uh, the, the theme every, every year. Mm -hmm. So um, part of the discussions which we have regular uh, regularly here at Saincom without borders uh, with Marina with uh, uh, Nasia who just joined also uh, is that we always ask what are um, the ways how you manage your community and also what is your community look like looks like is it something which is right interactive it's very hierarchical and very solid structure or is it something which you actually always uh, change uh, um, in the way how you basically govern it? What is the system of, mm -hmm. of organization which you have from the yeah. inside, basically? We do have more. a structure. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great question. 
um, we we do have a structure and we can name some pillars that create this uh, structure uh, going up. Uh, but the community is uh, gives a lot of room for for freedom. So the pillars what which I would mention is yes, you do have the high school students, you have the mentor, which is really is a high school professor. And then you have the overall high school who is our partner. Uh, then you have private companies who sponsor uh, the program and other NGOs. So we have this whole ecosystem. Then you have volunteers like uh, Julien was in 2019 uh, that come uh, and team up with you as referees or uh, judges because all of these teams compete as I was mentioning, in a in a sort of a sports sports competition, so you need people to evaluate their work, to give them points, uh, and actually the community globally is like one million people, and out of that we can say five hundred thousand, you know, students uh, going from kindergarten to high school, but then the rest of thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of people are volunteers and partners who who make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so apart from all of the structure with all of the entities, the community gives a lot of room for the students to grow in any direction they want. So they have the freedom to name their team, do their own branding, uh, manage their official channels, be very creative, do all sorts of events. Uh, in, it doesn't matter the field, like I was mentioning, mental health. So. The program has a structure, but at the same time, it's very flexible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, the reason why I also ask that is because uh, recently with Saikon Without Borders, it started during the pandemics, right? So we usually, mm -hmm. one of the questions which we ask here is of course, how this community which you build was influenced by that. For example, I don't know when Julian was a mentor, but I guess mentorship online is very different than mentorship offline. So what was your effect on that? And um, maybe you could suggest uh, some answer. Yeah. I must confess the, the challenges are there. So we used to do the physical events and the summer schools, we would do them in a location in Romania, in the heart of Transylvania. And we would stay there for two weeks uh, and do all sorts of workshops. Mm -hmm. So when you go from that, to something that is in front of the screen, that's challenging. But what we saw is that as long as we are connected and we have the same interests, and this community is exactly connected with having the same interests and passions, then it doesn't really matter if you're in front of a screen or you're out there on the field. Everyone wants to return to that. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's about you know finding the people who have the same interests as you who actually really want to tune in because they're interested about that topic. And sometimes we're talking 10 people, two people, or a hundred people, uh, we have no guarantee, right? When we used to do our official events, we would have a ranking of the teams, they would show up, compete, you would know. When you're doing a virtual event, you don't really know, <laughs> right? Um, if they will show up, if they will be interested, if mm -hmm. because they're doing online schooling as well, so maybe they're tired of Zoom or of screens or of yeah. I think it's good days and bad days in terms mm -hmm. of doing things online. It's mm -hmm. not always a good day. <laughs> yes. So um, I think that uh, I would be very happy actually to share the video which you uh, shared with us. And maybe let me try to yeah. share the screen so that we could uh, see that together because it may give some other per uh, perception on the what can one uh, see yeah. now. So let me share the video which you shared with me and I put it on full screen. You hear the voice, right? Yep.
Sorry for the quality of the internet. Uh, sorry. Great. Yeah, thank you so much for, for showing the video. Wow, brings back so many great memories. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's 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 really nice. I, I almost like want uh you know to to stop it and to play it again so mm -hmm. that you could explain us maybe what is happening here because it looks yeah. like basically you had a lot of different people, right, who were yeah. participating and we would have there uh, in 2019 almost 100 robotics teams. So we're talking, let's say, 1,000, 1,000 and a half of students coming with their teachers, mentors, parents uh, from all over Romania. And we had even international teams uh, coming there and volunteers from all over, all over the world. So Marina, we had volunteers from Israel as well, from the US, from France, we had Julien, and it was such an amazing uh, opportunity to really have a sense of community mm -hmm. of uh, people just supporting each other. It was mm -hmm. like almost we didn't have a competition there. Mm. <laughs> Everyone yes. was just there to enjoy, to talk about their passions. And what you're seeing here, we had a special guest, a Nobel Prize winner in physics, uh, Mr. Kip Thorne. Mm. Uh, talking about interstellar. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So you see here, you see the the robot and the the field, uh, and uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and their boots and uh, all of the mascots, like Anastasia, were mentioning. We had Princess Leia. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I think Nasia already noticed that. Uh, and actually with um, that, maybe I, I will stop it for now so that we have a good connection. But um, maybe uh, yeah. what, you, um, what, you, what we could do now is to maybe make a more like open uh, discussion session already because um, I guess that some people also have questions to you. And um, feel free to, to ask because I, I still have some questions left, but I would prefer that we could maybe uh, make uh, like an open discussion about maybe similar projects or about partnerships, right? Uh, so yeah, if anyone has uh, questions, feel free to, to jump. Otherwise, I can continue with mine. <laughs> I would I would invite if uh, if you uh, think it's. Uh okay with it, Liubov. Uh, mm -hmm. I would invite Julian to maybe say a few words about the, the championship and the global program because he's, uh, um, you know, collaborating with First US and First Canada and First France. So maybe if you'd like to share a few words, I think that would be just uh, wonderful. Yeah. Yes, just you need to unmute, um, unmute 
uh, yourself? Yeah. Yes. yes. Hi, everybody. So, Hi. yes, um, I think that first is a really, um, really nice experience uh, as students, as mentors, I volunteered. Um, I, um, I uh, co-found the first uh, robotics teams in France. Mm -hmm. So I had the experience about uh, students. Mm -hmm. So it feel like, uh, yes, like Gabriela said, a really strong community, like um, teams uh, will help uh, each other, but also uh, around the world with uh, Mexico. When we, with uh, France, we have connections with uh, Mexico, United States, so it's, uh, it's really uh, interesting about um, how um, these competitions can develop um, an entrepreneurship mind. Mm -hmm. Like um, like Gabriela said, um, for education, it's really interesting to have um, not like just uh, school, school, but also uh, uh, interesting projects. Um, and it's really interesting for the um, for university, for um, for profession professional aspects after so yes it's a, it's an amazing experience uh, at all the roles that we can uh, we can do yeah and you actually were um, at that moment when you were a mentor or you are uh, now uh, you were working or you were studying or what was your uh, status okay now I'm a, a volunteer just volunteer because mm -hmm. I'm in a master mm -hmm. uh, in Montreal. So it's why yeah. uh, I, uh, I went to Montreal because we, we did the, um, the uh, competition in Montreal because uh, in France, we don't have uh, any, uh, any competition regionals. So mm -hmm. it's why I uh, choose to, to do my master now in Montreal because I, I love the city. And uh, oh. yeah, volunteers, I'm now volunteers. Yeah. But yeah. It's, okay, so it's you are online. So you managed to, yeah, to do it uh, online, and maybe th that's what is a positive side about that, right? That you actually can do it from anywhere, and we can connect from any country, wherever we we want. Sure, like I, I, I think. I would love to. Sorry. Yeah, please go ahead. No, no. I think it's. Um, it's really interesting to have uh, online because it's not we we don't have borders so it's one advantage of this kind of uh, situation <laughs> but uh, yeah yes actually the question of borders uh, for for us uh, it always also is important because uh, uh, me and Nasia we work in the organization called lectures without borders and we always write felt that before right now it's much easier to organize lectures but uh still it's quite challenging so i don't know if nasia or marina you have any questions to julia or to gabriella maybe we can uh kind of yeah hi hi maybe i can add something hi to everyone yeah. hello um, yeah. um, so actually i am on the bike right now because i have to go to the supermarket and you know with the covid it's very limited time, so I'm hearing you <laughs> while I have to go around. Uh, I like very much the presentation. Actually, I wanted to ask uh, a little bit about the mentoring and how long it took you to prepare the students. So, you know, as, as I understand, you do this as a volunteering activity, so it's yeah. important to know how much you devote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a continuing process, so it's ongoing. It never stops the mentoring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh, because uh, the the thing about the program is the students change from one year to another and you always have new students so it's like starting from scratch in terms of mentoring so uh, my credits go to the teachers the high school teachers professors who mentor uh, the team uh, and who facilitate them working working in teams and most of the high schools here have dedicated uh, a space just for the robotics team. And they made it into their, let's say, robotics lab. So they would meet there, they would work on their robot, and they would have the mentor. But the concept here is not more of mentoring and training, 
but more of learning by doing. Mm. So as the students are really figuring a lot of things out by themselves, this is the concept. Sometimes this trial and error uh, and they learn by doing sometimes mistakes, which are not mistakes, they're just part of the, of the process. And we do provide them with uh, training materials that we have on our YouTube channel with different professionals in terms of building the robot or program it or uh, 3D printing. I well, I mean, I guess you're right. In the end, it's overlapping with programming. So that's actually one very common point we have uh, in all STEM, I would say, across all STEM right now, that yeah. everyone needs to know some type of programming, right? Even if yeah. right, for robotics, even more, and it's actually I think, very interesting because it's very test oriented, right? It has to be tested at every step. Yeah, uh, yeah, so times. <laughs> yeah, I was actually wondering because you know, today is the one of the Mars, lo Mars rover landings because there has been one from NASA and ESA, but also from the United Arab Emirates. Like, there is a lot of countries right now that send it, send rovers to Mars. So I was wondering if uh, uh, the students actually know about these events and, uh, you know, it is a motivating, let's say, thing to know about these events, just simulating their own rover in their mind or like trying to understand what's particular for that. I yeah, think we, we yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah, actually on uh, during our 2019 season, the robot that the students were building was mostly like a rover. Uh, you would have the surface of the field, which could be considered the surface of the moon, and you would have minerals uh, like silver and gold, and the robot would collect these minerals and uh, would sometimes have to hop on things like it was a crater and then, you know, have all of the skills to grab things or just to move past obstacles. So the students are familiar with this concept, with space exploration. I was talking just a few days ago with one of them who wants to be an astronaut. So I would love to yes. see her, she's a girl. <laughs> I would love to see her, <laughs> right? Actually, I was, I was thinking it would be very nice to even organize like a lecture from uh, an expert because we happen to have a lot of connection with the Planetary Society, let's Planetary do Exploration it. Society. Yeah, yeah, and this would be it. great as a follow-up, I think. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I love this idea. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, actually, for mentoring, I also had a small question. If Marina, uh, is it okay to ask? Uh, yeah. So, uh, for mentoring, for example, how do you, if people, for example, subscribe, for example, I subscribe, but I have no idea what uh, robotics is, right? And I don't know if uh, Julien, you specific, mm -hmm. uh, specifically focus on it, but uh, what do you do in that case? Do you teach people how to do that uh, with, for example, online videos, for example, also, or is it? Uh, like, um, yeah. I'm not uh, in a uh, robotics part, but uh, like uh, if uh, a student, is that your question on mentor? Yeah, yeah, on, like, on, on, on mentors for students, I guess. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, like mentors, um, we have, uh, we, in team, we accept all kinds of mentors, like uh, engineers, like uh, um, programming, so, it's not uh, just about robotics. So the first uh, step is to present the competitions, the concept of the competitions, the values, and what um, adults can uh, develop and uh, help uh, students. Like um, it's uh, it's really open. And uh, if uh, someone, uh, uh, professional or engineer, wants to to go in the team, it's it's okay. And um, we present the competition and what uh, it's important, the values like a gracious professionalism, uh, which is uh, to uh, to develop uh, um, uh, in English, uh, it's a uh, gracious professionalism. It's a, a core value of first. It's like uh, you, you, 
it's um, it's not a co it's not competition it's cooperation it's cooperation and mm -hmm. competition it's like uh, mentoring and uh, learning by doing with uh, the help of adults mm -hmm. okay i see uh so it's basically yeah instead of this word of of uh, competition you use this this word and yeah hmm yeah absolutely and uh, i love the the points that uh, julian shared that um it's learning by doing uh but we all need guidance from from mentors and um, let me give you an example there are teams who are tempted to change their programming just one hour before the match so maybe that's something you feel like doing but then you have an adult mentor that would suggest maybe you know let's think of a game strategy let's not change the robot right now uh you know because if you only leave uh the teams without a mentor or an adult that could you know facilitate a different different type of reasoning uh some of them would you know maybe not have this balance of opinions they would only stick to their opinions and sometimes it, it, it's good to, to consult with like uh, Julian was mentioning, not only engineers, but also you could have mentors who are um, business people who would just suggest maybe uh, let's do something in terms of branding and communication and fundraising, uh, right? So uh, we have parents who are mentors. This is a, a great, great thing about the program. Mentors who, uh, you know, bring cookies to the teams or who, use their personal cars to <laughs> go with the team everywhere uh they're big supporters and uh, yeah <laughs> the power of mentors is, is so big no matter the age i have mm -hmm. a mentor now and my mentor says i should have more mentors actually <laughs> which is a good idea because if you're a person who has multiple interests multiple passions like yeah. the teenager students have nowadays yeah, you should have multiple mentors to to actually guide you or to have someone to exchange ideas with, right? Yeah. I think that's an amazing thing. Yeah, it's a beautiful actually thought uh, and the way to put it, right? Rather than saying that you should have a, a teacher or um, yeah, like just one for the whole class, you can have a direct person, right? Yeah. Yeah, Marina, yeah, I yeah, think I interrupt. And create this ecosystem. I don't hear you well. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, we don't hear you for some reason. Yeah, we don't hear. Yeah, maybe from the phone or try from um, from other ways or maybe. Uh, now? Yeah. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was really interesting. Uh, uh, I can imagine how uh, teenagers happy to be there. Um, I have a question about the structure now, about your infrastructure. Let's say, how uh, do you have a special platform where the mentors and uh, uh, um, boys and girls can connect, or you use the main uh, programs like Zoom or something like this? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a, that's a great great question because now we. Um, uh, we rely so much on technology, so we really need platforms uh, for for all of our ideas. We do have our websites and official channels like YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, where we do our official communication. Every mentor has an account on our website where they upload materials. They do the team applications and registration for the season. Uh, there's the international website as well, US-based, where um, all of the teams can find all sorts of materials. And for our events uh, right now, like the summer camps or the winter camp, we are using uh, Zoom. 
uh, for our meetings and workshops. Or if we have recordings, we just upload them on, on our YouTube and training materials uh, as well. Uh, teams uh, have their own platforms as well. So they have their official channels where they post every day things about their team or, or uh, promote their own events, which they do on Zoom or other platforms. There's also Discord, which uh, is a working tool for them. And we also have some online groups where uh, we have like more of an instant messaging, instant posting of, of stuff, which is uh, which are some Facebook Facebook groups. Um, yeah, uh, these are the the platforms. And missing the physical events, which are now virtual. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll get to some hybrid form soon. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah, and for example, for um, for your uh, particular uh, plan for the nearest future, it's our kind of uh, common question: where, what are the directions which you would like to to take? If you would be given, right, for example, unlimited funding or something which uh, you would allow you to to do whatever you want. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a fabulous question. I would love to hear everyone's answer. <laughs> Let's exchange ideas. Um, uh, I would foster even more leadership in terms of creating um, programs uh, for for students to develop their voice, their uh, personality, have confidence in themselves. Uh, and then have confidence in others, understand each other. Uh, some of the students uh, face bullying, right? Uh, or they are not understood by their families or communities because they're interested in robotics. We still have this fear of people being afraid of robots or being afraid of the future of technology. And uh, let's say they don't have really a support system I would invest in their own leadership, developing their personal skills more through different types of programs, um, create support systems. Everything should be in place in school for them. But since we don't have it, that needs to be done from, let's say, NGOs like us, and that requires funding. And right now, of course, this program addresses some specific skills, and it's a robotic system education program, but since we're working with people and we get to know each other, we know the challenges they're going through in their personal lives. You hear all of the stories. So if I would have like uh, unlimited, you know, funding and all sorts of things, I would invest in people, in their skills and making, uh, providing them with opportunities like, uh, yeah, really empowering them to be astronauts or the next Elon Musk. Why not, right? Which is happening right now because even sometimes you don't have all of the resources that you need. But if you have the idea and you really have the commitment, nothing is impossible. I, I'm a big believer in that. Uh, in general, for you, uh, in terms of... Um like searching for people who will support you is it a big problem or for now you think if you have a good idea it's always possible to find right support yeah 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 i have this positive outlook that if you have ideas and those ideas are backed up by the good energy uh everything comes together like einstein used to say everything in our universe is energy so energy attracts energy and attracts the equal counterpart. Our ideas attract our other ideas. So we really need to be visionary <laughs> now more than ever, because so many things are, are changing. So really looking forward to, to growing the program, to uh, finding new ways of uh, supporting the educational system here in Romania and connected to the overall global STEM education landscape even more. So, yeah. 
with partners like you. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much. Yes. So um, yeah, about partnerships, I think that uh, under the video we will of course leave. Um, yes, we will leave all the contacts of yours, and we will put the link also to the video. And um, I suggest that we close official part, and I will start uh, stop the uh, recording for now. But uh, please feel free to. Um,